There are 83 million mobile phone subscriptions in the UK. That's more than one for each person. And it certainly means that one hazard of modern life is that of damaging a mobile handset accidentally. Well, our next entrepreneur believes he has a solution. Hi, my name is Oliver Murphy and I'm here today looking for an investment of £50,000 for a 15% equity stake in my company, Revive a Phone. A repair kit for water damaged phones. The reason I started the company was after seeing on Twitter there was a post every minute about someone damaging their phone with water. Losing all of their emails, important contacts and all their personal photos. I'll now show you how easy it is to use the repair kit. Remove the phone from the water and turn off immediately. The quicker you can turn the phone off, the more chance you have of repairing your phone. Carefully cut the top of the pouch with scissors. Place the phone inside with the Revive Phone solution for seven minutes. Seal it up and leave. Remove the phone and dispose of the Revive Phone solution. Place the phone back into the pouch with the super dry sachet for 24 hours. Once the 24 hours is up, remove the phone from the pouch and power up the device. It should be fully restored. I have so far had a high success rate with the kit, selling 1300 in the first 10 months of trading. With it from a 400 pound startup cost, I've turned over 20,000 pounds and taken a net profit of 3000 pounds. Thank you for listening. I'll be happy to answer any questions. An intriguing pitch from Oliver Murphy, whose product demonstration certainly appears to have caught Deborah Meaden's eye. Oliver, I, look like, I feel like I've been watching a magic show. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew I'd had that about a month ago when I did exactly that thing, which was drop my phone and I've had to transfer everything. Like I say, it looks like magic to me, but I'm sure it's not. <laughs> it's, it's, not it's not as much magic as, you, as it seems. I, um, basically, I, found I wanted to fix water damaged phones and um, I decided that I'd look at investigate a bit more and see what, um, what caused the damage. It's not, it's not actually the, the fluid itself that cre creates the damage, it's the, the contents of the water, because water, water isn't pure, so it, it's the minerals attaching themselves to the phone's components. When I was at my villa uh, a couple of months ago, and I jumped in the pool with my phone in my pocket, yeah. and I got out of the pool, and I just went with my phone and left it on the side to dry in the sun. Was that a stupid thing to do? If it didn't work at all, mm. there's a chance it would have short-circuited by, by trying to... Um, you obviously tried to turn it on afterwards. It came back on, but it just did silly things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But those, those connect, like I say, those connections need to be cleared. But you're putting it in another fluid, is that right? Yes, that is right. So you are literally, that solution is literally washing yes, away... It, it cleans away the, the minerals and excess, um, whatever's in the water. So I saw your, the back of your package and lots of warning signs and yellow triangles and yeah, skulls is, and it, bones it and is, God knows it what is, It's highly flammable. I just said to myself in my head, this is what I would buy at an airport to take on holiday, but you couldn't. No. It's a massive flaw. I'm really upset about that. Oliver's product might not be joining the travel plug or the inflatable pillow as an airside essential, but the dragons still want to discover more about the young entrepreneur behind Reviverphone. Oliver, what else have you done? Um, I'm not suggesting that you can't have done a lot if you've only left school two years ago, but what else have you done? In terms of what, what I've, like, business-wise or...? Yeah. 
No, uh, what have you done? <laughs> You're hating something now. What have you done? What have you done? <laughs> what have you done, Robo? Um, I'm not asking if you've been naughty. I'm no. asking whether you've, you know, what else have you done in terms of business? Any yeah. other ideas you've had? When I was younger, I used to, I used to buy um, wholesale items and then sell them on. That's, that was a little thing I did. And then with the phones, I used to buy them broken and then sell them, sell them on eBay. So how did you fix them? I I buy the parts in and. How did you know how to fix them? Uh, trial and error, pretty much. How big is your market? How many people are dropping phones I... in the toilet or jumping into the pool like Duncan I... <laughs> likes to do? There are lots of there's lots of facts around saying 10% 10, 10 of people damage their phone with water, and they say in the UK there's been 860,000 a drop down the loo a year, and for instance on Twitter there's a, there's constant posts about people damaging their phones with water or iPods with water. I think you've created a, a, a great product. Thanks. Um, and I'd respectfully ask that all four dragons immediately say that they're out <laughs> so that I can continue negotiation with you. <laughs> Absolutely not. Is that because you try to get it cheaper? <laughs> Peter Jones isn't the only one in the den with a sharp eye for a deal. The generous margin on Oliver's phone repair kits has made the dragons eager to find out more about their manufacture. Where are you getting them made? I'm, I make them myself. Oh, oh yes. right. So are you at home in, your, in a room somewhere with a big bucket full of chemicals and uh, these pouches yes, tipping uh, in there in plastic gloves? In my, my mum's utility room, so... <laughs> If you went into a proper premises, manufactured this properly, yep. you've got a very nice margin now, but you won't be able it to be maintain the same that. Win larger volumes now. Have you worked out that if I bought a unit and manufactured it properly? At scale? Just roughly. £2.30, mate. I don't want to give you a figure that. No, no, that's fine. The answer is I don't know. I don't, yeah, know. I don't, I don't know, to be honest. Is there a whole world out there who, who repair water damaged phones? There are, there are um, say, repair services that can repair phones, but it's a bit more inconvenient going to the repair store. And you need, to, you, need to, you need to trust them, obviously, with your expensive phone. If you're a phone repairer, yes. it's your business, do you know, they, this, do they, is this how they fix they may, yes, water they may, damaged they may phones? That, yes. So you made a consumer... A, consu a consumer product, right, yes. Okay. So this process is used, you can't protect it in any way. No, unfortunately. This is used in lots of big repairers already. Yes. My view is, you know, the product itself, I'm not entirely convinced by because it could be replicated. This is a bit too sort of early stage, not entirely sure what the next step is. Good luck with it, but I'm out. A setback for the young entrepreneur as a first dragon declares himself out. Will Deborah Meaden be any more willing to strike a deal? I think you will make some money out of this, and I suspect this will be a stepping stone to your next big product. But right now, my instinct is saying this isn't the big one. So I'm afraid, Oliver, I'm out. Thank you very much. I believe in you, and I think you're going to do great. Thank you. About 20 years' time, when I'm in a nursing home, reading the papers about you being halfway up the rich list. But I'm not going to make you an offer. I don't really think there's anything I can add. So, for that reason, I've got to say, I'm sorry, but I'm out. Thank you very much. Thanks. Despite praise from Duncan Bannatyne, Oliver's chances of securing an investment appear to be slipping away. Will telecoms giant Peter Jones be prepared to back his initial enthusiasm for the product with an offer of cash? Mm. It's a tough one, Oliver. Lots of people come up with some great ideas. And the ones that succeed, they succeed for two reasons. One is that they've not only got the right idea and they know how to take it to market, or 
their idea is protectable. Yep. This is something that you you need a little bit more in terms of the protectability about, against your idea. And there are, including me, people out there that could do this at speed. So I'm going to say, Oliver, sadly, I'm out. Okay, thank you. So a change of heart from Peter Jones spells further disappointment for Oliver. His chances of securing £50,000 now rest with Kelly Hoppen alone. I take on board everything everybody said in this room, and yes, it can be replicated, but you, as an entrepreneur, you invest in people. Um, I think you're great. I think you've got huge potential. I might be mad, but I'm going to make you an offer. For the full amount, um, for... Twenty-five percent. OK, thank you. Yeah, what, what, what could you bring to help? I'm sure that I can get this into big supermarket chains and other stores around the world. And I can also bring fantastic PR to the table and get it out there. Um, and I know I'm asking for more of a percentage, and you might decide today that you just want to go away and you can do it on your own. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Would you be able to come down to 20% at all? No. I think I'd like to accept, accept the offer. Yay! <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I shall now go and drop my phone down the loo and see if it works. <laughs> well done. Thank you. So, a positive result for Oliver, who leaves the den with £50,000 and a promise of the backing needed to potentially crack the high street. I did think I was going for all of them at one point, and uh, I was I was hoping for Peter Jones, and I didn't really I didn't really know much about Kelly, so I was a bit am I happy? Am I not? And I didn't really I didn't really know, but yeah, no, it all went well, so I'm very happy. Well done, Kelly. Yeah, good one there, Kelly. Fantastic. I like well him. He's, great. he's a, he's a yeah. smart, great he's guy great. to invest in. Yeah. I better get on with that idea quick then. You bloody dare. Good luck, Chili. You'll smash it. You don't need the luck, love. We do. <laughs> we love what we do, and we're passionate about what we do, and that makes doing what we do a lot easier. Here we go. Oh, my God. The dog doting duo are fully aware that there is someone else in the building today that also has a penchant for pooches. Exciting! We know Deborah's a dog fan, so we're quite excited about putting this out to Deborah. Um, but to be honest, I think all of them have something that they could give to our business. Yeah. As well as their canine companion, the pair come with stacks of self-belief. Yeah, I'm quite confident, otherwise I, I, I don't think I'd have come today. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dragons. My name's Jamie and this is my wife, Gemma. We are UK sniffer dogs. We're here today to ask you for £70,000 for a 15% stake in our business. We're course providers for pet dog owners and dog trainers. We have online courses and practical courses specifically in scent detection. The benefits of scent work are endless for the dog and the owner. We liken scent detection to mindfulness for dogs. So sniffing reduces anxiety and stress in dogs. We have brought along today a handler and her dog, who is one of our trainers, and she's going to demonstrate a little bit about what it is that we teach to the pet dogs. 
And what we would like is if one of you guys would volunteer to hide um, a couple of cents for our dog, Chili. Is there anybody that's willing to do I'll that? I'll do it. Hey. Stress-relieving scent detection courses for dogs is the canine concepts Jamie and Gemma Pound are pitching. They're offering to hand over 15% of their business in return for £70,000. Perfect. And with the scents now in place, it's time for a doggy demo. We can obviously visually see that, but dogs don't see red, so the dog will have to use their nose to see it, uh, to find it. Touch. When the dog finds the scent, what they should do is stay on it. So they'll point towards it with their nose. Yes! It's very clear yeah. that that's the scent. <laughs> well done, Chili. Good. So if you can move her on. Yeah. Chili's learned that she gets a reward when she puts her nose in there. You're <laughs> off for the treat, Rachel. Okay. Come on, Chili. <laughs> that's Good. it. So I'll... That's it. She can search everything. <laughs> yes! Good girl. Oh, yeah, well done. well done, well done, Chili. I think Chili deserves a round of applause. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Rachel, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Chili challenge over. Peter Jones is first with the questions, and it appears he has some pooch problems of his own to sort out at home. It was quite good to watch. We just recently, over the last year, got a husky, mm -hmm. and. She just digs everything up. I mean, the damage is just unbelievable. She just chews on everything, has done for a year. Any advice? Digging and chewing can be a stress behaviour. Sorry, is this a personal yeah. one to one? <laughs> Are you having. I, I see what's happening. I can sort this out here. for you if we have a chat <laughs> after consultation. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it'd just be nice to. No, but it's a good nice. follow on. It's purely selfish. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bit about the business. Um, how long have you been operating and what are your sales? So UK Sniffer Dogs has been running since 2018, so it's a very new business. In year one, we turned over £13,000. Year two was... <laughs> Isn't it? 60. 60. 60,000 pounds was year two um, turnover. And year three has obviously this been year. a partial year, so £24,000 turnover so far and net profit is 4,000. OK, can you just explain how it works? You send a trainer or you, the dog comes to the trainer? So, um, Rachel is from Manchester and she runs dog training classes. She's come to one of our courses and we've taught her the content to go away and teach. When you train somebody, what percentage do they have to give to you on their income? They do. Nothing, nothing. How do you operate without getting some form of commission on an ongoing business? Because for me to be really interested or an investor to be interested, you've got to see how you're going to get, A, some money back, yeah. ultimately, and how the business could grow. Could this become, you know, the big... The online... So, the big yeah, business so that we think we it could become. We have thought about this, and um, the way that we see the business going is more instructors coming through our doors, but also taking it globally. So it would be kind of like a franchise. The entrepreneurs bat back Peter Jones's concerns about how their business can bring in the bucks by outlining a strategy for global growth. Next to try and sniff out if their company could be a cash creator is dog-loving Deborah Meaden. I've got four Vizslas, can you imagine? <laughs> Um, and um, we actually do use scent training, so I certainly get the need for it. And it isn't just about the dog. It just makes your life so much better when you've got a happy environment for your dog. Um, but I do want to understand the size of, of the business. Now, are there any examples out there in the dog world of dog trainers that have actually turned it into a big business model? <sighs> There's... There lots. are, mm. there's lots of uh, organisations, but the problem is dog training is not regulated. Yeah, no, Okay, I know so that. you don't need to have a qualification to become a dog trainer. Yeah. You can be a retired dog handler and tell someone you're a dog trainer. But that kind of sat behind my question. What we did was talk to other people and we said, we've got this issue, who do you know? Oh, you don't want to go to so-and-so. They're not yeah. very good, but I tell you what, she's brilliant. 
So it's a very, very word of mouth industry because it's not regulated. And I'm also going to probably look for something that's multifaceted. So again, in our dogs, we found some are scent dogs, some like food reward, one of them likes touch reward. What I want to do is find somebody who can say this is how to work best with your dog as opposed to just scent training. Deborah Meaden wonders if the entrepreneurs are being too dogmatic in their approach by only offering one kind of activity for their four-legged friends. Tej Lalvani now wants to find out how the idea for helping to make hounds happy came about. Tell me about how you guys got into this business. So, um, from a child, I've always wanted to work with animals. Um, I was a veterinary nurse. That's when I did my first dog training course, which is where I met my husband, Jamie. <laughs> and then the rest is history. <laughs> um, I used to be an electrician. Uh, so 10 years ago, I was burnt 45% of my body. And it... <laughs> and it put me back. And I was physically hurt, mentally. Uh... Sorry. I had to put myself back together physically, and I had to put myself back together mentally. And my dad, who's not with me anymore, it's even harder, suggested that I got a puppy uh, because I was having surgery and all types of different things and physio. And my only way out was getting out of my pup and getting out of my dog. And my dog, who's also not with us anymore, um, he was a difficult dog. He was a hard dog to work. And Scent detection was definitely that mindfulness for him. It calmed him down as a dog, made him a lot easier to handle. Um, so I retrained, and that's when I met Gemma. And I started following Gemma around on a few courses, and... <laughs> <laughs> Is that technically <laughs> stalking? Gemma booked a course, it was a bit. <laughs> I booked a course, and one thing led to another, and we set up our own dog training business. Um, well, yeah. well, you've been through some hard times, clearly. And, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no need to apologise at all, but, uh, but you're here, which is incredible. Jamie reveals personal fortitude by dealing with a traumatic experience and then turning it into a business idea. But will it be enough to convince Deborah Meaden to put her money into this duo's dream? Guys, I'm going to tell you where I am. My heart would love to do this. But I think you've got a structural issue. I almost don't want you to get investment. You might, you might get it today. For you to succeed in what you're doing, you're going to have to have a system, a quality control system, that says when you've actually trained somebody and they go out there and train, that you can check that they are up to wearing your logo and your brand out there. And that's when the whole franchising model becomes really, really complicated. And I promise you, you're going to end up doing the stuff that you do not enjoy about your business because you are going to have to stop training dogs. That's the nicest no I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, an, it's it, a it, nice it, no because it's true. I don't even say it with a heavy heart because I <laughs> think that, in hindsight, you might feel the same. But anyway, okay. uh, I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. A nice no, but a first no nonetheless as Deborah Meaden feels the entrepreneur's plans to franchise are flawed. And it appears Tuka Suleiman also has reservations about the pair's path to profitability. You come across very well, but I've not heard a clear strategy in which it would tell me that in two years' time you were doing a million, two million turnover. So for that reason, I'm out. Um, look, I really like you guys. I think you've presented really well. And, you know, I think that £70,000 for something where the business model has not been proven yet, unfortunately, it's not an investment for me. So good luck, guys, but I'm out. You two are lovely. But I think this is a great business for you to make money out of this, but not necessarily for me to make money out of this. So I don't think it's, a, it's the right business for me. I'm out. Thank you. Three dragons drop out in quick succession. Only Peter Jones remains. He needs help with his husky. So will he throw Jamie and Gemma a bone? Firstly, inspirational, really fantastic. The journey you've been on and where you've got to. And I actually think you've got a business. 
I think you've got a business that you can grow yourselves and it will be successful. From my perspective, a business like this, as it scales, it's immediately quite tough because it's really predicated on one or two individuals and there's only two of you. Yeah. And at £70,000 as well, I actually think you've come in with quite a punchy amount of money. If I'm going to invest in something like this, I need to take a much larger slice of the pie. What slice would you like? <laughs> well, <laughs> what are you and, looking and, for? And, and, then it, and then it gets into the fact that I don't want to own so much that it puts our relationship disjointedly. For me, sadly, for that reason, I'm out. And I'll still help you out with that husky. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, I need help. <laughs> Peter Jones declines the deal and Jamie and Gemma's dreams of investment are over. We don't get to talk to the wall. <laughs> I'll talk to the lift. <laughs> they leave the den without the £70,000 they were seeking or a dragon as their business bulldog. I don't think I've ever been so pleased that somebody didn't get an investment. <laughs> I, I don't think they could believe how lovely you were. We're going to carry on doing what we do best. We've got this far um, on our own. Watch this space. Peter Jones' name obviously comes up because of his success with Reggae Reggae Source. But there's a new dragon, Sarah Willingham, who's very experienced in the food and drink industry. So we'll certainly be looking towards her for opinions, without a doubt. Hello there, I'm Ben. And I'm Suyan. And we are pitching for £50,000 investment for a 20% stake in our Korean food company, Yogio. In 2009, I took a break from working in London and somehow ended up in a tiny little fishing town on the east coast of South Korea. Suyun's was one of the first friendly faces I saw and after two amazing years together we married and started planning the next step of our journey. After watching Ben fall in love with my mum's cooking, we decided to take our own brand of authentic home style cooking to the UK. We bought this trailer and hit the street of London. Now at the beginning of this year, uh, Sue and I decided that we would launch the UK's first Korean cooking range. We have created five amazing products that cover the most popular flavours from Korean cuisine. The full range launched in Selfridges last Friday um, and in the last week we've secured listings with Fenwick's Food Hall, Whole Foods and we've just agreed listing with Ocado. We'd like you to pop up and try a little bit of the food if that's okay and then of course we welcome any questions. Okay. What have we got? So it's all finger food basically. Um, a pitch and a product with punch from husband and wife team Ben Anser and Su Yun Yu. Oh, that is uh, spicy. They're seeking £50,000 in return for a 20% stake in their range of Korean cooking sauces. Cereal restaurateur Sarah Willingham wants to find out exactly what's on the menu. Hi Ben, hi Suya, I'm hi. Sarah. Hello. Hi, Sarah. hi. Hello. Great pitch, thanks a lot guys, and great food. Oh, thank really, you. really good. Thank you. So talk me through the street food. Is this what you serve? Yes. And that's yeah. it, it's always some form of grilled meat in one of your special yeah, sauces. Yeah, we do two types of dishes basically. Uh, one is called bibimbap, it's a mixed rice bowl, so you have a, your choice of grilled meat, you have a bowl, bed of rice, five vegetables, the chilli sauce, you mix that all up before you eat it. What are you charging? Um, so between five fifty and seven pounds. Okay. Portion. And what's a good day's trading then? Between six and seven hundred pounds a good day. So you can turn over six six hundred quid in a day. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Out of that van. Yeah. Wow. This has got a restaurant concept in it, actually, which is low cost, great price point, really mass market price point. Mm. So I, I'm really interested in that yeah. side of it because I think you start, you do that, your sources will follow. 
healthy takings from the trailer have demonstrated a public appetite for Korean cuisine. Deborah Meaden is curious about the product's unusual name. Does it mean anything, yo, 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 yeah. Yogi-yo? <laughs> Yogi-yo is an expression to uh, use to grab people's attention. In Korea, when you go to a restaurant and you sit down, and if you want to order something and just shout, Yogi-yo, and then just wait. Oh, like, that's great. I hear it all the time, Yogi-yo, 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 and it just felt, it just felt right. An attention-grabbing brand name can be a massive asset, assuming it can be properly protected. But Peter Jones believes he spotted an obvious flaw. I noticed on your products, you don't seem to have really protected the brand that you've launched. You didn't get yogio.com, for example. Just yeah, wondered why. We, I mean, we've trademarked Yogio. Um, the yogio.com um, wasn't available when we started the business. So we went with um, .uk.com. It's that. And if I go yogio.com, what do I get? It's just like a pizza delivery service, basically. I am a little bit concerned that there is another company that does food. It's a bit of confusion. Did you think about that at the time? Do you know what? I'm going to be totally honest with you. We thought of the name Yogio. We uh, checked and it was it was there. And then we went on holiday to the Philippines, came back, and someone had bought it. So as you build your brand, you're just going to give them a, a lot of traffic to their site. Um, well, hopefully we'll be directing traffic to our own website. Um, but sometimes it just isn't possible to secure a .com. Where would the 50,000 be spent on? Basically, the next part of the strategy is that we really want to take the products to the supermarkets. Um, and to do that, we have a business model that involves teaming up with uh, manufacturers um, that actually produce the base ingredients for these products and can bottle them in our label. Should we achieve that, the potential for the brand and the business is absolutely huge. Ambitious plans for supermarket domination from Ben and Soo Yun. It's a journey that Source Supremo Peter Jones has been on before. I'm lucky enough to have lived this for years of my life with Levi. Publicly, I know how easy it looks, um, but I know the reality. Yeah, yeah. And totally. it's going to be incredibly tough. I think you are not even a challenger brand, and you're really, really up against it. And you're up against it because when you start to scale and get bigger volume in a marketplace like this, you're going to have all of the larger players in the market looking at and seeing you as a potential risk. They will overly discount products and incentivize the supermarket chains to support a brand over another. A harsh lesson in the realities of the condiment business from Peter Jones. Will his words of warning have rung alarm bells elsewhere in the den? I quite like the brand. I quite like the space. I think Peter's picked up on what I do see as a big issue, which is you're going to find your margins are going to be really, really squeezed yep, as you we, try to yep, go into we, the bigger yep. players. So I won't be investing. I'm out. Whenever I invest, I always ask myself, what could I bring to the party to add value? Mm. As far as the products concerned and my knowledge, I think there are better dragons who could really help you. So on that basis, guys, I love you dearly, but I'm out. Warm words, but cold comfort for our entrepreneurs, as Tuka Suleiman joined Deborah Meaden in declining the deal. 
Will the dragon who banked £120 million from selling his own online business prevent this fusion of East and West from going south? It's not ideal that you don't have the .com or the .co.uk. It's not ideal. But you can overcome this. You can shove it up with paid-for search. But I think for all the reasons that, uh, for all the reasons that both Deborah and Peter have said, it, 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 there's a, uh, an inherent risk. So f for that reason, I think this is a punt, certainly. But I think it's, it's a reasonably priced punt. Um, so I'm going to make you an offer. I would certainly be willing to put up half the money for 10 percent. A wholly unanticipated offer for half the cash. That's £25,000 for Ben and Su Yun. Will the woman who's built her fortune on a passion for food and drink be willing to match or even better it? I can't lose this restaurant thing. I know obviously that's Thank my... Yeah. I've, I've opened so many restaurants in my life that it is a part of my DNA now. But there is not a great Korean street kitchen out there. You walk through the door, people shout Yogi-Oh to you. <laughs> I mean, it's like a really cool, great Nando's. I mean, it's... I'm super excited about that. I'm going to make you an offer and I'm going to offer you all the money for 25% of the business. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It's a compelling offer from Sarah Willingham. But the shadow of one of the den's greatest success stories and the dragon who helped engineer it continue to loom large. I'd rather pick up dog poo without gloves than invest in a business that is going to be in restaurants. This is far too early. To make this into a business, this, this for me is not where it's at. It's developing a brand that everybody is going to, at a consumer level, buy into that's, and that, enjoy. I mean, that's what it's all about. And that's the future. Mm. We're not expecting someone to take this on and run it for us, and we really will, will be pushing it. And if there is a chance for it to succeed, uh, it will do. I, I have no doubt, but I would not underestimate what success looks like in trying to take a business like this forward. Mm. And I think it's going to be incredibly tough. I'm going to offer you all of the money but I'm going to ask you for 40% of the company. Ben and Su Yun were prepared to give away just 20%. Sarah Willingham wants 25%, whilst Peter Jones is asking for 40. And the two dragons have very different visions of the business's future. Nick Jenkins has tabled an offer for half the cash and 10% equity, but it would require another dragon to match it. The entrepreneurs now face a tough choice. Do you mind if we take a Yeah, of course. Minute? Have a chat. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, okay, so I suppose there's a question for Peter. Um, Forty percent, obviously, is you know, it's a, it's that's a big chunk. Would you consider the beginning on an equal footing of thirty-three and a third percent each? We feel that that would be a really, really positive way to begin a relationship. Um, I think there are times where you've got to stick hard and be a dragon, mm -hmm. and then there are times where you need to do the right thing. I would be more than happy to, for us to be equal partners, a third, a third, a third, 
if that's something that will close the deal with you now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is that a yeah? You'd like to take the deal? <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Well done. Fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant. Really happy. Thank well you. done. Thank you. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, we couldn't have asked for anything more, you know. That's Yogi O! Yogi O! <laughs> Watch this space because I'm going to open a fabulous chain of Korean street kitchens. <laughs> ben and Su Yun have done it. They leave with £50,000 and a once in a lifetime opportunity to transform their homemade hot sauces into a multinational brand. Really a tough decision between Sarah and yes. Peter. Yes. But we did pitch the sources, and you know that's 100 percent what Peter Jones is all about. You've done an incredible job. You. We wanted Peter, and the fact that Peter Jones is actually a partner in our fledgling business is insane. 